Welcome along to part two of our video tutorial where we are creating a shopping list app. In the first video, we created this main menu. Let me just run it and I'll show you it. There it is, looking something like this, where we've got the user um, presented with seven different options that they can pick from. Now we haven't actually coded any of these options up apart from exit, so the first six aren't even going to work just yet. But when the user makes a selection, let's just say it, we go to exit, we press enter, and it exits out of the app. That's about as far as we've got so far. So in this video, we're going to try and add some functionality to some of these features so we can make our app um, begin working. Now what we're going to do um, in this video is we're going to learn a new technique in Python. And we're going to be talking about something called functions. All right, now this can be a little bit confusing, but if you just keep practicing with it, and we're going to do quite a few different functions in this um, tutorial, you will start to get the hang of it. So you're probably asking yourself, what exactly is a function? Okay, so in simple terms, a function is just a block of code, which is only run when you call it up. Okay, so an example, we're going to start with this one here. If the user selects number one from our main menu and they want to view the shopping list, then we're going to create a little function that's run, so a little block of code that will display the shopping list. If the user doesn't press the number one, then we won't even worry about running that code. The computer just skips straight past it, pretends it's not even there. Okay, so what we're going to do to begin with, we're going to turn this entire main menu here into a function. Okay, so pretty much everything on our page except for import sys and our shopping list at the bottom there is going to be turned into a function. So let me show you how we write one. Go back to the top of your page, underneath import sys there, just make yourself a new line. And what I want you to do is write in DEF, which stands for define. It means we're going to define a function. And you now come up with a name for your function, or come up with a name for this block of code. So this code we know creates a main menu. So I'm going to call my function main menu. Now you'll see that I use a capital M just here because we can't use spaces. They're a bit like variables where you can't use spaces in the name. So it needs to be one word. So I just split it up by putting a capital in the middle there. And once you've written main menu, open and close a bracket and then put a colon. And that's how you define a function. Now what you need to do next is highlight all the code you want to go inside of this function. So highlight from the print bracket bracket all the way down to where it says you did not make a valid selection. Okay, and we're simply going to indent that code. You can press tab on your keyboard, or you can go up here and press indent region from your format menu. And that just nudges all this code across. Now, all this code now that has been nudged across is inside this main menu function. And it won't even be run unless we call it up and tell it that it needs to be run. So at the moment, if we were to run our code, you can see nothing would happen. And that's because we haven't told the main menu to actually run. So how do we get that main menu to run again? How do we get this function to perform all these different actions in the code here? What we do is simply copy that line there, main menu, bracket, bracket, and put it right at the bottom of your code. That's all it is. So when the code well, when the computer sees that, it knows, oh yeah, I've got to go back up here to this main menu function and run everything inside of it. Okay, so I'm going to press Control S to save it, and I'm going to run that module, and you'll see that our shopping list is working again. All right. One other thing I want to do is I just want to put a loop inside of this function, just to confuse you a little bit more. It's going to be a while loop. So on the next line, after we've defined the main menu here, I want you to write while and then true with a capital T and put, whoop, and put a colon at the end. And then we're going to highlight all that code again, all the way down to you did not make a valid selection, and we're going to indent it again. Okay, hopefully that hasn't confused you too much. So we've got two layers of indents now. Okay, and the reason I put while true there is that each time a user makes a selection and performs a task, I want this main menu to pop back up again. I don't want the user to exit out of the program. So let's, um, we can't really test it yet, but I'll show you how that works in just a moment. So I'm going to save that. That's our main menu function 
all done and working. Okay, what we're going to do now is make a second function for when the user presses the number one. Okay, at the moment we've written in pass, which just ends the program without making an error. But what we want to happen when the user selects the number one, we want them to view the shopping list. So they, we want to print out that shopping list on the screen. Okay, so I'm going to delete the word pass from this if selection just here. Okay, so on the next line there where it says if selection equals one, we're going to run a function called display list bracket bracket. Now this is a name, oops, sorry, this is a name I've just come up with. You could call it anything, but I think this is a meaningful name. And what we're going to do now is just go down the bottom of our page beneath the shopping list. And we're going to define a function by writing def and we'll call it display list and then open and close a bracket and put a colon at the end. So that says we've now defined a function or a little block of code called display list. Inside of that function, when you press enter, you'll see your mouse cursor is indented. We need to write in the code to make this shopping list appear on the screen. Okay, so to do that, I'm simply going to go back to a few tutorials ago where we created a for loop to display items in the list. So we wrote something like for i in this shopping list here. So write in shopping list. And then we put a colon. We, on the next line, we simply print i. Now to explain that, it says here we've created a for loop and we've set the variable i to the first item in shopping list, which is apples. Okay. On the next line, this is the code that gets repeated each time uh, we run this loop. Okay. So this for loop is going to run over every word in our shopping list until it gets right to the end. So to start with, i is set to apples. It's going to print i or apples onto the screen. The code loops back around. Now i is going to be set to the second word, which is bananas. Okay, so we print bananas onto the screen. The code loops around to carrots and it prints carrots onto the screen. And it also does the same for potatoes. Okay, when it gets to the end, it realizes that there's no more words we can display. So it, the computer jumps out of that loop and will process any other code beneath it. All right, so let's save that and test it. Okay, so what we want to happen when the user selects the number one, we want to run a function or a little block of code called display list. So the computer goes to the bottom and it finds that little block of code called display list and runs these two lines of code that are inside of it. Okay, let's give it a test run. So here's our shopping list. If we press number one and press enter, there we go. It's displayed the four items on our shopping list. And you'll see that our shopping list reappears at the bottom. And that was that while loop I was talking about just a moment ago, this one here. Okay, that basically every time we run a function such as displaying the items on the shopping list, it just goes back to the start and runs all this code again and prints out the main menu so the user can select another option. All right, probably confusing you a bit here. Um, let's keep pushing on, pushing on. What we're going to do with this display list is just tidy it up a bit and make it even um, look a bit better. So before that for loop, I'm going to put print bracket bracket to put an um, empty line in. And then I'm going to print a little heading for it. And it's going to say, I'll put in one, two, three of those lines and write, Shopping list, three more of them lines, and close my quotation marks and brackets. That'll just add a little heading and a little bit of space to my shopping list when it gets printed. So let's run it and have a look and see how that affects it. So you can see here now we've got a space above the shopping list and then a nice little heading. And it puts the items in one by one. Might be good to put them in bullet points, actually. So what I'm going to do there, where it says print I. Okay, what I'm going to do instead of that is put in quotation marks and put a little asterisk. Okay, I might actually put a space and then close the quotation marks and then write plus I. Okay, so that will print out an asterisk first and then it will put whatever word I is equal to, such as apples, bananas, carrots, or potatoes. So let's save that and run it. We'll select one again 
And you can see now our shopping list when it gets printed looks a hell of a not hell of a lot neater than what first did. Okay. So our shopping list reappears after that, and we probably want to select number two next, which is adding an item to the shopping list. So let's do the code for that. Okay, so let's go find in our code here this L if selection equals two and it's set to pass. Let's get rid of pass and come up with a new function name. So we want to add an item to the shopping list. So let's call this function add item. Whoops, add item. Make sure you put a capital I in there where you separate those two words. And don't forget to put an open and shut bracket at the end. So when we press number two now, it's going to call up a function to run called add item. Let's go down the bottom of our code here and define that function called add item. So you write DEF, add item, bracket, bracket, and a colon at the end. When you press enter, we can now put in the code that will add an item to the shopping list. So to do that, we need to ask the user what item do they want to add to the shopping list. So let's put an input. All right, enter the item you wish to add to the shopping list. Colon, space, quotation marks, and brackets to finish it off. Now remember, when we ask that question, we want to store their answer into a variable. So let's just call it item. So item will be equal to whatever they type in. Now, on the next line, we're going to go shopping underscore list. So we're accessing the shopping list. So it'll be shopping list dot append. That means we're going to add something to it. And then in brackets, we tell it what we want to add to the shopping list. So we're going to add in that item variable from the line above. So whatever the user typed in, it was stored in the item variable. So now in this next line, we access the shopping list and append or place an item into it. And it was called item. Okay, we might also give the user a bit of feedback telling them that it has been added to the list. So we might put in a print statement and say item, which is whatever they typed in up here, put a plus sign and then quotation marks, space and write um, has been added to the sh oops, shopping list. All right, I'm going to save it and test that. Hopefully this will work. So let's see what happens. So if the user selects number two, we're going to run a block of code called add item. So if we look down here, we've defined that block of code called add item. And these are the three lines of code we want to run. Okay, well, let's run it. We press number two. It says enter the item you wish to add to the shopping list. So let's add some chocolate. Press enter. And it says chocolate has been added to the shopping list. Perfect. All right, now we can do a bit of a copy and paste job for the next one. What we're going to do next for number three is remove an item from the shopping list. So go to your L if section where it says selection is equal to three instead of pass. Let's call this function remove item, bracket, bracket, just there. So when the user presses three, we're going to run this function called remove item. Scroll down near the bottom of your page. Oops. And I want you to copy and paste what you just put in, where it says define add item. Let's paste it in a second time. And instead of the word add, we're going to change it to remove. So we've now created a function called remove item. We ask the user to enter the item they wish to remove from the shopping list. So I've updated those two words. Now instead of shopping list dot append item, we're not appending or adding an item to the list. We're actually removing it. So we put in the remove item. And in the last statement, it says print item has been removed from the shopping list. All right. So that is your code there to remove an item from the shopping list. It's very similar to the code above it where you add an item. Okay, save it, run it, and let's see what happens when we press number three. Enter the item you wish to remove from the shopping list. So we need to know what's on that shopping list. I remember there was apples on it. So let's press enter. It says apples has been removed from the shopping list. 
So now, let's just make this full screen. Now, let's press number one and actually view the shopping list and see if apples is missing from it. There you go. It actually is. It's only got bananas, carrots, and potatoes now. It took apples away from it. Okay. Now, remember, we can press number seven to exit out of our app. There we go. Those three lines, remember there, those three little arrows mean that our app has finished running. So we've got some good functionality happening already. Um, what we might do... Uh, actually, I might come back in the next video. I'm going to make one more video that will get these last three items working. Okay, we've been going for long enough in this one, so you can have a rest for a moment. We'll come back in the final video to get four, five, and six working.